Dearest gentle viewers, did you doubt me for even a second? You knew I would be on here. We gotta talk about it. I'm decked out in blue for the Bridgerton blue, of course. So there's actually a lot to talk about in addition to the trailer. They released some stills, the official poster, so we'll be looking at all of that. I did film my live reaction to the trailer, which literally I woke up for it <laughs> and watched it right as it premiered and filmed my reaction which I will be putting in this video, but I will also be just giving general thoughts and then re-watching it on camera, doing a breakdown, play-by-play -play type thing. Oh my god, I literally just woke up. Okay, okay. Ah! Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Let's... Ah! Oh my... Holy shit. Dearest gentle reader, we have been apart for far too long. At last, London's fashionable set has made its return. Classic. And it oh, seems that your Breton is moving with the changing tide. So too okay. is this author. I cannot live at home any longer. I must take a husband. Does my lady have a suitor in mind? Is that her brother? Colin. Under what foreign sun did you apparently oh. get so sturdy? <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. Is it? Something wrong. It seems as if every Bridgerton was born to attract notice. For some of us, notice is very slight. If a husband is what you seek, let me help you. Are we all friends? Friends. I should like to see your skills as they are first. How delightful to see you all. <laughs> well, we are <laughs> no! I would not be angry for you to be a lost cause. You must not say such things. You are Penelope Featherington. Do not forget that. She's not seeking a husband in you, I hope. No, I'm only helping her find one. Since when are you worried about Penelope? author knows to be true is that diamonds are not the only gems that sparkle. Got cut off, but we're, we're here. We're here. Okay. Lord Debling. He is eager to take a wife this season. You look especially beautiful tonight, Miss Featherington. Yes, yeah, she does. You have done very well, Penelope. What more could you want? Do you believe the best foundation for love is friendship? It is rare, but you must follow your heart. What is the primary force <gasps> that guides us along our paths? Okay, Alison Will. Is it our minds or our hearts? Huh? Wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. I have to re- I have to rewatch that right now. Let's watch that shit again. And it seems is I have to laugh. How delightful to see you all. I can't watch that. I can't watch that. That is too funny. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Some things are what clicking, finally. Knows... What was that? What is he waking up from? What is the primary force that guides what is he waking up from? Why is he waking up from? Okay, Marcus, okay. Well, okay, Anthony. Okay. Is it on Where is this and when is it? And... <sighs> I mean, come on, look at the material. Look, are we, are we getting kids so soon? Has fortune finally smiled upon us? Is this, is this the market? No, 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 That is, um, okay, because the pearls in the hair, that's the same thing with Debling. Okay, 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 I'm pretty sure. And that's episode three. Oh my God, oh my God, there's tears. <coughs> zooming in right now there's tears in his eyes we've seen that on violet i believe 
Love that he's asking this. I love that shot of them laughing. That's so cute. Who? Who the hell is that? Who is that? Surely. No, that's not. That can't be. That is not. Who is that? Oh, I don't think it's anyone important, actually. <laughs> it's probably like a an exhibit or something. He's shirtless. Boy, you get put a cold sweat. My dreams are coming true. Okay, that is no. Wait. No! Not the like mist in the background. Fog. I'm <laughs> furious. <laughs> and we clapped and we cheered. Him looking at her lips, absolutely. So, I think general thoughts overall, there was a lot that was very expected, things that I had predicted or thought were the case. And then there were a few things that I was a little shook by. Some timelines might need changing, some ideas might be morphing, some predictions of mine might be changing based on this trailer. Overall, I live. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I mean, how could I not live for a Bridgerton trailer? Like, I just don't think it's even, like, physically, humanly possible for me. So, loved it. Thank you. I'm so grateful. I will be analyzing every millisecond uh, until May 16th. You know what is interesting, though? I definitely did notice a difference between this trailer and the previous two trailers in that it feels like there is something missing a bit. And that's because this is only a part one trailer. So I felt that feeling after watching it and then it occurred to me that, oh, well, this is only the first half. So of course you feel that feeling. Whereas the first two seasons, you had the whole trailer. So you had hints to things that happen later in the season, you know, a flash of um, Kate's corset or whatever as they're undressing, like things like that, that we didn't get here. So this is focusing on the first four episodes and while a lot seems to happen in them, I'm like, a lot is happening in the second half, guys, because because there's still a lot like <laughs> that is not here. So that was very interesting to see the difference between the two of them. I cannot wait for the part two trailer. I will be feral. Like off the top of my head, Eloise and Cressida, I had seen people predicting that and that is correct. Very interesting. It's a very interesting route to go down. For me, this helps predictions and also just ideas because I thought if she was with Cressida, I had a bunch of ideas about how the second half of the season would play out. So knowing that now is really useful, but girl, Eloise, we'll, we'll get it sorted out, it'll be fine. But that is just really interesting. Before they had said like Eloise has a new special friend, I wouldn't have predicted this arc for her at all. But I'm very interested to see how they do it. Debling, <laughs> Debling is so much more present than I ever thought he would be. Although he is only gonna be in one, three and four. So again, we'll, we'll be done with that once the second half comes around. But again, this trailer, so much of it is centered on the beginning parts. There were little to no references or nods or sneak peeks at anything having to do with an unmasking Whistledown plot, if they even do that. They could totally not do that at all. I even thought before season two had come out thinking about this, I was like, are they gonna maybe keep it a secret from Colin until after they're married and he finds out while they're married? Like the drama of that would be a lot. And of course they wanna keep Julie Andrews on. They wanna keep Whistledown as a plot device going. It has a lot going for it. So I don't see them retiring it for sure. But now that Eloise knows, there's no way that Colin and Penn are gonna get married without Eloise saying that. Speaking of which, she, she had a little interjection asking about whether she was thinking of him for a husband, which I found very interesting, very different from the books and the previous seasons because Eloise, smart as she is, she just has no clue. Somehow she doesn't have any clue that her best friend is mooning over her brother. I shouldn't talk, I've been in Penn's position. Anyway, um, <laughs> in the books, it almost was such a ridiculous thought that it didn't even cross Eloise's mind. So the fact that they're changing that in the show, I like, and it makes sense. It's similar to like how they had Kate be basically like, no one likes her, she's ugly. Like that's kind of what it was in Viscount Who Loved Me. But then you cast Simone, actually, you can't be, you cannot be telling me that she has no suitors. Give me a break. So they changed that. And I think accordingly here, they're changing certain things, which makes sense. We didn't see any of the moonlight scene, I don't think, which is very intriguing to me. I'm like, what are you, what are you hiding? What's going on? 
And my thoughts about that might have changed as well, because I don't even know that the whistle down is going to factor into this part of it. He, she's dancing with Debling in episode four. Maybe it is that, like, they have their first kiss at the end of episode four or something like that. That's the cliffhanger. Uh, I had considered that, but again, the way that they were talking about it just made me for some reason think that it would be whistle down. I really like the moments between Portia and Penelope. That like warmed my heart. That actually, <laughs> that actually really did. Uh, I have it in the video, but there was a shot of Eloise looking at Pen coming in, in the like emerald dress. And her expression literally made me start to tear up. Oh, Eloise's expression is... I could actually, whoa, that I don't even know why that just made me so emotional. That made me emotional. I don't even really know why, but it just, it was very visceral. I was like, <laughs> um, so it makes me look forward to the dynamic there, seeing what happens and their reconciliation. That's inevitable, of course. They did make mention to diamonds not being the only ones that shine. It's not shine. And then smash cut to Penelope entering in her glow up moment and reveal with the emerald dress. So naming an emerald, I think that actually could be correct. Whoever thought of that, I think you actually could be correct. Or they're just making that a theme. That it's like, just because Penelope doesn't fit the stereotypical diamond, doesn't mean that she isn't also beautiful and lovely and worthy of love as well. She's just a different kind of jewel. Your face is a rare jewel. Ooh, watch my Queen Charlotte reactions, guys. Like, I was psychotic over that. That was, I mean, whew. Oh. Are we? Getting. I can't be sexy. I didn't dare to get my hopes up for this, okay? I, I don't trust them. <laughs> I don't trust them. We have to be rebuilding this trust, okay? So like, even things that they say, I'm just like, sure. Because there were things that they said leading up to season two that just simply did not happen or didn't pan out or were very misleading. <laughs> so I'm just skeptical. But it looks like we might, and I would like to see it. And thank you very much and I feel most fortunate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Have them have sex in episode one, because that is episode one. Yes, they're newlyweds. They're obsessed with each other. Of course, they're gonna be having sex. Like, what Like, what do you mean? And we deserve to see it. Yeah, I'm so happy about that. I just, wow. Wow, 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 wow. It does seem like the dynamic now is Penn being clueless. She, I think, really has set her mind on getting over Colin. And that's when the power dynamic shifts and that's when the tables turn because then he's pining, longing, yearning after her where she had been the one doing that in the previous two seasons. So that is a very interesting thing, but I think she is clueless to it. Either she's clueless or she's resistant or she's skeptical of it, as you would be. I mean, I would be like, are you fucking kidding? Like now? Okay, sure. Now that I, now that I have other prospects, okay. But it always takes another prospect, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it just does. How do you know you love someone unless you're jealous of them with someone else? <laughs> That's the only way that you can possibly know that you're in love, especially if you're clueless about it, like Colin is. It seems like it's gonna be a very friend dynamic, which of course they are friends to lovers, so it makes sense, but it just seems like it's gonna be the first two seasons, yet flipped a little bit. Obviously, Penelope is still gonna have underlying feelings. Like, you cannot convince me for a second that Penelope is actually over Colin. Okay, it just will never work. You will never convince me of that because it's simply not true and I know from experience. So I'm sure some of those feelings are still gonna be there and she's gonna be like questioning. Maybe they have moments where she's like, is this romantic? And then she's like, no, no, it's not. He's never liked you. Like, get over it. Like, move on. You have Debling. You you have to get married. You need freedom from your family, which I did predict that. I was like, she wants to get out of that house. Let me tell you, that's why she's finding a husband. The scene with Penelope <laughs> trying to flirt with those guys was hilarious. It had me hee hee ha ha -ing. It's just too good. I'm just like, oh, okay, I see the rom-com they're talking about. This is it exactly. I wish we would have seen a little bit more Francesca. Honestly, any of the other Bridgertons. It was very Penn and Colin focused, which of course, like, it's their season, but there was really not much Eloise other than her plotline with Cressida. There was, like, no Benedict other than his teasing Colin, which I love that moment. That is so cute. That is so essentially Bridgerton. And I am gonna make a compilation of like sibling moments in Bridgerton because they just give such siblings. It's crazy. And then Francesca had like, you know, a couple scenes, but a lot less than I would have thought given that she's making her debut. Although it does seem like there might be a kinship between her and Penelope, which I would find interesting. Both of them 
are more introverted than say a Louise, for example. Even more so than other trailers, I feel like it was very heavily focused on Penelope and Colin with a sprinkling of, you know, Devling in there as a plot device. <laughs> sorry, sorry, King, like it, it is. Although the way that Lady Danbury said, like he's, he's eager to wed, I was like, is there something dark-sided here? I doubt it, but you know, who knows? We saw very quick shots of like Lady Danbury and Violet with Marcus Anderson, new character. There's a lot of speculation about who he is, but he shakes things up apparently, and I would like to see it. Also, I wanna say while I will be dissecting things in this trailer, this is not at all my comprehensive breakdown of the timeline and like predictions and sleuthing, okay? Like that's gonna be a separate video and I will be going through every single frame of this before that happens. Just keep an eye out for that if you want to figure some things out. If you want to know all you can possibly know, then you're gonna wanna head to that video. But for today, this is just general thoughts. It does seem like a majority of the whole first part is gonna be not necessarily romantic. They'll definitely have like moments and, oh my God, Colin waking up in a cold sweat. <laughs> I was about to say, did I speak that into existence? I obviously did not, but you know what? I, I'm sure I did. Actually, I'm responsible for that. So you can thank me. I would like to simply see it. Honestly, the way that they're promoting this, they might be like unhinged in the things that they're doing and saying. Who knows? They might have mere sex. I don't, I, that is unbelievable to me to think that Bridgerton would do that. But like the way that they're acting, I'm like, y'all are acting up. What is happening? And I like it. Let's watch the trailer and then any insights that I get from rewatching it. Gentle reader. Love the shot of Colin. We arriving. have been apart for far too long. Like she's slaying. She's At serving. At last, London's fashionable set has made its return. And it seems that our bon ton is... Very interesting that Violet is the one presenting Francesca. I think there was a lot of speculation that it would be Kate since she is Lady Bridgerton now. She's Viscountess Bridgerton. But I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's her mom but we'd like to see it. She looks beautiful. She does give Daphne vibes. I see what people are saying when they say that there's similarities there, but again, much more withdrawn, introverted. I see that. I'm very interested to see what they do with her character for sure. Have sex on the desk. Like, I don't, need I say more? The chemistry. <laughs> they are, they are ravenous. They are rabid, okay? Like, and nothing will change that. No amount of time being married, no amount of anything will change that. It doesn't even matter that it's not their season, girl. You can never make them not obsessed with each other. And that's the way it should be. It's moving with the changing tide. So too is- Yeah, so they've done some splicing there to make, I've definitely caught on to different splicing that they did to make it seem like it's the same scene, but it's definitely not. I'll get into that in my timeline dissection. <laughs> Prudence and Dankworth is hilarious. Does my lady have a suitor in mind? Is that her brother? Colin. <laughs> I, okay, okay, I'll expand on that. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. Leave the premises. What, what, girl, give me a break. I can, I'm so sorry. I cannot take Colin seriously in this scene. And again, I'm not saying that he's not attractive. Like, come on now. People who say he's not, I'm like, okay, well that's just like objectively untrue. Anyone that you say in Bridgerton is unattractive is more than likely absolutely not unattractive in the slightest. But just that, <laughs> just the expression, just the fact that I know that that's the first episode, like Colin coming back with a new swag or like picking up a glove from the floor and like what, like get out of here. You literally just arrived home. Go back, in fact. Actually, I don't want to see your face anymore. In front of the family, right in front of my salad, you do this. But I, ju I just cannot, I laughed every single time I saw that scene. That is too funny to me. There's just something about it that is so funny. <laughs> oh my God, okay. Do you apparently get so sturdy? Love, and he looks good. He looks hey, good. It's good to see you. Is it? Something wrong? 
Okay, so obviously they used the audio from the conversation that we saw something wrong. Um, I am glad to see that they had interactions preceding the goodnight Mr. Bridgerton scene because I definitely wanted that. I wanted the first episode for her to be still ignoring him and him being like, what is going on? Only for it to culminate in that scene, making it even more delicious. It seems as though every Bridgerton was born to attract notice. For some of us, notice is very slight. Very interesting. I like this line in the trailer because I think it sums up a lot of thematic elements to this season. A lot of things that make Penelope a different type of love interest, a different female main character, heroine. And it's true. You know, there is a disparity there. But again, I think circling back to the diamond's not the only thing that shines, you know, it's showing that there's variety there, that there can be diversity there, that, you know, just because the Bridgertons are perfection, I mean, just because they're gorgeous and amazing and sexy and the best, doesn't mean that other people are also good. But her being aware of that and that insecurity is very interesting. I'm wondering who she's saying that to because it could be a lot of people. Either Colin or Eloise even like explaining her perspective a little bit or just like her point of view having been treated badly by the ton. And also, you know, episode three, this is, and the guys are still walking away from her. But again, I'm like, oh my God, like, you're going on a date with Debling in, in episode three and seemingly trying to attract other men in episode three and episode four, you're dancing with Debling and like what, like she's like going after other men, which actually I'd love to see. It's actually exactly what I would like to see. And I think it's necessary. Again, puts them on level playing field, but I'm, I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, oh my gosh, we're gonna do, like the first four episodes is gonna be this. That's crazy. I don't even know what to think of the next four episodes. Oh my God. It's a husband is what you seek. Let me help you. Are we not friends? <laughs> They're leaning into this harder than I even thought. This is very much the route that they've gone with. They have gone with this trope. They have gone with this structure. I personally think it's a really smart one. I think it's a really effective one. I think it communicates a lot of things really well that need to be communicated. But I didn't know that it was gonna be like this overt. You know, like we're shaking hands, agreeing on me helping you find a husband. And then I'm gonna observe you in the wild as you try to flirt. Like I didn't, well, I, I did think there would be some of that. And obviously we saw the scene with like the, with the compliments where he's like teaching her, but I just didn't know that it would be this much. Or maybe that it would take up the amount of time that it's taking up. Maybe that's what I'm more surprised about. Yeah, they're friends. Okay, okay, King. But I, it, my heart kind of, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> it's, it's funny cause like, while it is very satisfying to see Colin yearning after her, I think there's something in the trailer that feels dissatisfying or unsatisfying because I just would like to see them like together you know what I mean of course we have to wait for the end of course that happens in the second half I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it but I just you know seeing her be like yeah we're friends like so resigned she's basically made up her mind at this point she's convinced that Colin's never gonna like her which by the way that is a really good way to adapt from the book. And I think that's a good detail that they kept in because it's important that she's not still pining after him and not still thinking about him. And that she like tries to move on. She's like, girl, I'm over you. Like we, we're not doing this anymore. But there's something about her face that's just, I don't know, just the way that she delivered that line is very sad to me. And I'm like, Colin, when I catch you, <laughs> when I find you, <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, also, <laughs> This is going back a bit, but the line that Benedict gives Colin about like, where did you get so um, strong or like whatever he says, that I love that so much because it feels very much like a meta line and like a wink and nod, almost self-referential. And the same way that they did in season two where Daphne was like, good luck for your season. I'm, you're gonna need it, like that type of thing. It was very, it was like acknowledging the Bridgerton glow up, which by the way, I, I, I mean, other than Penelope, because they were intentionally like styling her badly, 
none of the glow ups are like glow ups to me. I'm like, you didn't find Anthony attractive in season one? Give me a break. You're telling me that uh, uh, some hair, just a little bit more hair on his face completely blinded you from how startlingly handsome and beautiful that man is? I always thought Anthony was so attractive and I found it so weird when everyone was like, <gasps> I didn't find him attractive in season one. I'm like, what are you talking about? I think definitely Colin does have a bit of a glow up, but like, he's 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 been attractive. They've all been attractive. Benedict, I have a hard time even seeing how they're gonna glow him up. I'm sorry. I have a hard time seeing it. I think he's glowing up. I think that will be in the contents. Oh, that's another video too. But yeah, Colin, <sighs> we're friends, are we not? So then I'm like, this is episode two. So when do they have the apology? It I guess it could be earlier in the scene and then they go to the market after this definitely because that's the same thing and then the promenade but mm, I'll leave that for my timeline dissection. Friends. I should like to see your skills as they are first. How delightful to see your <laughs> splendid weather we are having. <laughs> that gives oh, me we everything. We found to be a lost cause. We must not say such things. You, Very interested in that. Do not forget that. Love hate relationship with that line? No, I'm only helping her find one. Since when are you worried about Penelope? I love these shots. The shots are really good. That, that shot of Eloise, something about it, I need to analyze the actual like cinematography and the aesthetic of it, why it evokes that like emotion. But it's so her, like it epitomizes her. I'm like, classic. That is so Eloise. That shot is so Eloise. And, you know, we have the classic pining stairs. We knew we were gonna get them. I'm eating them up. I can see the thing of like a shift in confidence where Penn still, at the beginning, you know, she's saying like, I, I wouldn't blame you if you thought I was a lost cause. I'm like, girl, love yourself more. Like what is going on? Obviously having interest from people other than Colin seems to start to boost her confidence a little bit more. And she starts that journey of like more confidence and self-love and things like that. And then Colin kind of, you know, falls off of that. Whereas he started on a mighty high with that glove, with those red leather gloves and picking up that, I can't without seeing that. Something about that is just too funny to me, but that is fucking hilarious. Penelope, they're both of their delivery there the acting chops, the the versatility, you know what I mean? I'm really glad that they're getting to do a comedic element to this because honestly, Bridgerton is so fucking funny. I'm also gonna make a compilation of all the funny moments, at least in my opinion. But I just love that. That's very rom-com. I'm like, oh my God, it's so cringy. I'm crawling out of my skin seeing it. I hate to see it, but I love to see it. Hey. What this author knows to be true is that diamonds are not the only gems that sparkle. That shot of Colin, he has tears in his eyes. I noticed that on one of my first watches. Even though they said that was him looking at her glow up, I'm pretty positive he's wearing a different outfit. So I think they just stitched that together. It could be him looking at her for sure. It could be a longing glance, as they said, and the like after thing with Luke and Nicola, but I'm pretty sure that's not his reaction to her coming in. But I find it very interesting that everyone's shook by this and like it's being positively received, whereas we know where the night ends. So I'm like, what happens in the in-between time? What goes so wrong? Cause she's having her Cinderella story moment right here. She's walking down the grand staircase, like, Come on. Lord Debling. He is eager to take a wife. Oh, Blue looks so look good on her. She tonight. does She's look especially to... beautiful tonight. You have done very well, Penelope. What more could you want? Mother, do you believe the best foundation for love is okay. friendship? We had to have, we, I love this part of the trailer, this, this little clip. Do you believe the best foundation for love is friendship? It is rare but you must follow your heart. Where he's asking Violet whether she thinks that friendship is the best foundation for marriage, which by the way, she said those exact words in season one. And then the cut to Colin and Penelope laughing. I'm glad to see that they will be having just like silly goofy moments of them just being like dorks, you know what I mean? And like laughing with each other. Cause that friendship is still integral to the relationship. You know, it doesn't have to be all angst, right? Like we need some of that, but 
there is still that connection there. They are still friends. They do still know each other. They're kind of like family in a way. So that bond is still there. And that connection is going to be there regardless of anything going on in the romantic side of it. But I mean, the requisite violet line, violet voiceover that is like the thematic statement of the season. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, real true love is worth it. True love is worth it. And I don't remember exactly what it was in season one. Maybe it was the You're Bridgerton, You Can Do Anything or something like that. It was from that conversation, I'm pretty sure. There is nothing you cannot do. You are a Bridgerton. But, you know, we got to have the Violet voiceover giving advice to her children. And it's representative of the whole season. <laughs> we love that. I'm going back a little bit. What more could you want? Mother, do you believe the best foundation for love is friendship? It is rare, but you must follow your heart. Who are these people? It's gonna be like no one. <laughs> when I saw Colin shoot up out of that bed, it was euphoria. I, <laughs> I would like nothing more than this exact scenario. And thank you for previewing it to me because I'm glad to know that it's coming and I will be thinking about it. Absolutely, absolutely. It's of course a good way to show again, since you can't do first person narration from Colin, it's a good way to show that his Feelings and thoughts are changing and shifting and things like that. Okay, let's keep going. What is the primary force that guides us along our paths? Francesca looking at Violet and Edmund uh, was very interesting to me. I can't really discern what's on her face. She honestly has, I don't know if this is just like her resting face. She has a sad face in most of the shots that we see her in. She seems sad, which I hate to see, but it might just be that she's introverted or quiet or shy or just in her own world or she has resting sad face, who knows? Or she could be sad for some reason, but I find that shot very interesting and a good tease for what we might be able to expect for Francesca's arc this season. Then Violet and this man's. Now I have theories, I have ideas, I have suggestions about what this could be, but I don't know. I'm living for the carryover of Queen Charlotte storylines. I like seeing a carryover and I like the shot with him and Lady Danbury later they have beef for some reason. Again, I have ideas, but this is for another video. I can't be getting into that. Okay, Allison Will. Penelope. This is maybe the most interesting part of the trailer. And of course they have to save it for the end. It's the climax, so to speak. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this is very interesting. Where the fuck are they? I think it could be the Featherington Garden. Again, that is for my timeline. I will be going like into it then. I'll figure it out. Don't you worry about that. I will figure it out. But where are they? Why are they meeting up like this? He's not wearing a cravat, so maybe not a ball unless like, I don't know, he's just being a slut. Penelope looks really done up like a ball, more so than the moonlight scene even. They're meeting at night. And then, we get a classic gaze shift from her lips to her eyes. Or our hearts. To tie the trailer off. And I've never been happier. <laughs> Again, like I wish there was more of this, but I just don't think there's gonna be a lot of this particular energy in the first four episodes, it seems like. Unless they're saving that, unless they didn't wanna put any of it in the trailer, but this is really the only moment where it's like, ooh. Okay, things are being like acknowledged openly because they are good at denial and delusion and that checks out with the rest of their characters and their book counterparts. So, you know, if they're both in denial and delusion for the first half, that works. But again, I'm like, but I wanna see them like knowing it. I wanna see them like having a moment and not like shying away from it or having a moment and like knowing, oh my God, we reciprocate this. Like this is happening. This is what it is. But again, I just think the majority of that is gonna be in the second half of the season. So it makes sense that it's not here. But just seeing this, I'm like, oh, yes. 
and the like the breathy Penelope. Also, that's another thing I found very interesting. This could be totally incorrect. But in the trailer, at the beginning, he calls her Pen. And we saw him call her Pen in the Good Night, Mr. Bridgerton scene. Second half of the trailer, when it's obviously later episodes, so three and four, most likely, he's calling her Penelope, which I find very interesting if that is intentional. If it's not, then, you know, whatever. But if it is intentional, to me, what that is representative of is basically Pen is his childhood friend, his family. He's always known her. She's always been there. That's Pen. And then he starts to be like, wait... He's like, wait, she has a full name? But, like, he's like, oh, she's, like, a woman. Like, Penelope. Like, that's what it gives to me. I don't know. That's what it gives to me. And then I think if they are doing that, then I think it's going to turn back to Pen once they're together because then the two have merged. Anyway, he sees her as a woman and as a bestie boo. And they can be together. And he can call her Pen. I think him calling her Pen is so cute. Um... I made a I made a video of every time that he says her name. I don't know if I should post that or not. Let me know. But I, I noticed that. I was like, interesting. Because he rarely ever calls her Penelope. He's only called her Penelope in the whole two seasons, I think, once, twice, three times maybe. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it's like a low number, especially in comparison to the amount of times that he says Pen. So hearing him say Penelope more than Pen in this trailer stuck out to me. And I think if they are doing it, that would be a good way to like show that he's, you know, seeing her differently and that it's like, oh, I just thought you were Pen, but like, you're Penelope, you know, that type of thing. I don't know if anybody's gonna understand what I'm saying, but okay, finally for this, I'm just gonna skim through and give you any location details or things that I was able to spot and didn't really have to think much about. Episode one, garden, presentation, uh, Kate's study fucking on the desk. We love to see it. We've seen that costume before. We've seen all of these. We know what this is. I mean, he do be looking good. So that's episode three. This is episode two. They're gonna go to the market and promenade after this. Market episode three, because she's wearing the same things with Debling. All this says is episode two. Episode two. Who knows? But I love that shot. End of episode one, glow up, she decides to have... Who knows? That could be episode... That's episode four. That's episode three. That is the same... This this still that we got of Debling and Penelope. So that's episode three. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Okay. I'm going to my sources. Where have we seen Violet in that dress before? I'm going to the document that I have... Don't you worry, so I can figure out what episode he's already asking about. Is friendship the best foundation for love? It is episode two. That's the, that's the half moon ball. Okay. Very interesting. He's already starting. He's already starting. Probably by the end of episode two, he's going to be, like, pretty much fully aware of, like, he's like, oh, this is unfortunate. <laughs> this is unfortunate. But wait. He's not wearing a cravat, whereas he was wearing a cravat earlier. But Violet's in the same... I'm pretty sure it's the same ball still. That's very... That's sus. <laughs> I will never not giggle and kick my feet at that shot. That's just... I mean, absolutely. I love that they have all the couples, like Alice and Will also. You know, this is new. We don't know what episode this is. That's a new look from both of them. Yeah, so like off the top of the dome, those are things I can pinpoint. But again, if you're curious about the season or like how things might play out, you're gonna wanna watch that video. The amount of detail and time and effort and energy I have put into the, like, I mean, being psychotic over this is I should be hired by the FBI full time. Dead ass. So you're gonna wanna watch that. Now we can look at the stills and the poster and talk a little bit about that. Okay, so we got the market still. I'm pretty, well, yeah, no, it is the market still. Her dress, she, no, it's, wait. This is a different market still. There's multiple market stills. One of them after the promenade. 
It seems like Colin's wearing a similar thing. He's really into this brown. Okay, the waistcoat is also green and looks like it has olives on it. He oiled his way right in. But this is, yeah, this is a different uh, market still. So much Cressida and Eloise. The only time we ever saw Eloise other than that one scene with Colin was her with Cressida. Like four different times. That's really crazy. I can't tell from that far away if we've seen that. Love the picture of Benedict, Colin, and Gregory in the drawing room. And I like that waistcoat on him. Again, very interesting. Them bonding at Lady Danbury's ball. Probably about feeling like they're on the outside or being nervous, shy. The Lady Danbury... Oh, it wasn't in the trailer. It was this shot that I saw. Lady Danbury, girl. The way that she's looking. I would like to know now what this is. That's probably episode four, right? If her costumes match. Yeah, the extraordinary novelty Hawkins Blue. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Colin's behind her in that. Interesting. Is that the same outfit? Because he's wearing the brown coat. Prudence and Dankworth, of course. Philippa and Hermans. The costumes are interesting. I don't dislike them, generally speaking. Alison Will, the Queen. There's a lot more I can glean from these later. For sure, and I will be. Um, okay, let's look at the poster. I have mixed feelings. I have mixed feelings. I don't want to, like, I, I'm not trying to be negative whenever I criticize something or say that I don't like it. If you like it, I love that for you. I just don't want to lie. You know what I mean? If something sticks out to me, I want to be honest about it. Also, not Luke being like, yeah, that green dress is stunning if I do say so much. Shut the fuck up. I'm done with you. I've heard enough out of you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was really cute. I don't think that's my favorite of her dresses, though. Okay. <clears throat> One, they're sick. Y'all are sick, motherfuckers. I cannot believe the amount of exposure, no pun intended, the mirror is getting. This is crazy. I did think, I was like, maybe it'll be them in a mirror, but then they did the mirror promo and I was like, okay, well, they're not gonna do it twice. Embarrassment of riches. Where was this energy in season two, guys? Where? Uh, another video. Um, Again, like, I get what it's going for. Obviously, these are outfits that we've seen. I do like the concept. Also, is that... I think that's the Bridgerton um, drawing room that they're putting it in. I like it conceptually. There's just something about Penn's face that I, I don't, I don't, it doesn't, it looks fake to me. Like, I'm like, okay. Obviously it is based off of a real picture at the very least. It might be the lighting and shading. And I get that they're trying to make it a little bit like a romance novel cover. Like, I get that, but it just, Looks a little weird to me. Her face, particularly. The face. The light uh, on the face. That just... It just looks like it's, like, photoshopped in. Which maybe it is. But... The light shining on her out of the shadows. We see... I see a lot of symbolism and a lot of good things that I like. And again, conceptually, I really like this. I just personally... The... Penn's face looks a little strange to me. But we already have a poster of Penn, you know, with the mirror... They've done so much mirror stuff. What, like, what is going on? This is not the same show. <laughs> or maybe this is what happens when they like their couple. Anyway, but yeah, so those are my first thoughts and reactions to the trailer, the stills, and the poster. I will no doubt have many more thoughts in the future, which I will be sharing. And the timeline dissection, I am going to get into it. I will be, I mean, sleuth of the century. Sherlock Holmes who? Okay, so if you're interested in that, if you want to see that, stick around, subscribe. If you're interested in Bridgerton at all, I will be having something for you. And I will see you for whichever my next Bridgerton video that I post is, of which there are very many being edited or written or whatnot. So I will see you for another Bridgerton yet again very soon.